Urgency, noun, the quality or state of being urgent, a force or impulse that impels or constrains. Family, a noun, the basic unit in society traditionally consisting of two parents rearing their children. Also, any of various social units differing from but regarded as equivalent to the traditional family. Photography, noun, the art or process of producing images by the action of radiant energy and especially light on a sensitive surface, such as film or an optical sensor. I've always felt one of the most important responsibilities a photographer has is to photograph their family. Family means different things to different people. Traditional, non-traditional, immediate, distant, or even friends who become that close over years or over moments of trauma, stress, training, or circumstance. My mother was our documentarian. As a child, her camera was part and parcel of our lives. The camera was normal, expected, and always a natural extension. There was no pretense, no posing, and no emotion attached, at least by those of us being photographed. After I became a photographer, the baton was passed to me, and this responsibility is one I take seriously. But I had never investigated my mother's understanding and path to photography until now. The name of this poem is Rearview Mirror. Rearview Mirror, Rumble Seat Ride. Those left behind, creating their myth, voyagers. Black tar roads, huddling winter strangers, sinking from dangling chances and lost, unkept promises, waiting in mapped patterns for dreamless dreamers, finding twisted highways, fearing to go, fearing not to go. Hope behind the darkness, a velvet curtain stillness, Rustling in the silky breeze, their maze in the mirror. Tuned radio voices calling. Hearts cargo in the trunk, where kept secrets are packed in old, deeply folded detours. Hiding in the rumble seat, windswept in the rearview mirror. I never had the opportunity to have a camera, but my hus after I got married, my husband's mother gave me a Graphex camera in a leather case. It was a very nice camera, and I really didn't know much about doing anything with it. But I thought, okay, hey, I've never done this before. I don't know anything about it. And that always was appealing to me because can I do this? Can I take pictures? I have a friend who was doing some work on wildflowers, uh, and we lived in a woods, near a woods in Indiana, near a, a beautiful woods full of wildflowers. And I said, oh, hey, I'll go ahead and photograph all these flowers for you, and then you'll have pictures of them, and you could draw them. And she said, great. So that was my first big project. So pictures create a curiosity. They answer questions. They, they guide you in seeing things you think well, why did I take that picture? And maybe you discover stuff about yourself when you look at your pictures. I never thought I was a very good photographer. I just, I just liked to take pictures. And it was like grabbing a bit of life and keeping it. I was a mother. And, and just simply being a mother and having the kids around and, and, and when you happen to have a camera in your hand, you're going to get some pictures. I don't think I ever felt like I owed it to the family to get pictures. Picture taking to me was always pretty light and fun. I, I, like, I like taking pictures of you guys. Camera was fun for me. It was useful. I like it because it recorded unexpectedly a lot of phases of my life when I look back through it. It was, oh, I remember that, or oh, I remember that, or oh, I had forgotten about that. So photography was a nice addition, but it was never a burden of a profession or a burden that I had to do. I just liked to do it, and I, I had good cameras. That Pentax, I had the wide angle, and I had the telephoto, and I used them all. Our family is but a speck in this whipcrack land, like dust from the spring wind, passing through, forgotten but for whispers of fame or misfortune. This land of legacy is for but a few. The rest of us kick hard for the surface as the years flow from the current beneath, the current of life, the current of family, and the encompassing current of history. What we must do with fortitude is live like we mean it, passionate, 
focused, fully alive with lungs of thick air and open to what lives around the bend in the parts we can't yet see. There is no more waiting. We must appreciate the now and step forward to embrace the reality that all lives are fleeting. Fleeting but integral to the landscape of living, the landscape of love and the landscape of knowing there's an end. Security is the sunrise and the flicker of the dove's wing. Trust is the rain and the lightning strike. Eternity is the earth beneath us. Dear Mother, please send money your best and most important son. All right. So a few short years ago, a friend of mine who is older, wiser, and more important in photography, including more important in the archiving and preservation of photography, said to me, Milner, we're at the beginning of a 40-year time frame where we will have nothing left. And what he meant by that was the digital age had finally caught up to the American family, and many people were losing their archives based on a variety of reasons. All the images were in a mobile phone, we lose the mobile phone. All the images in a laptop, Junior pushes it off the counter, there's no more laptop, etc. Now I thought, this is, sounds like an exaggeration to me. So at the time, I was a portrait photographer and I began to ask my clients, hey, what's up with your archive? And clients started to say something very interesting to me. They started to say, we are so relieved that you're here to take these photographs. And I said, that's a peculiar choice of words, relieved. What do you mean by that? And it turns out that a lot of the families that I was photographing had no visual history of their family whatsoever. They'd lost all of it. And I thought, wow, that has to be like a one-off. There's no way. And it happened over and over and over again. So my point with this is that you have to figure out a plan for archiving your work. The family work is important. Whatever your archiving plan is, create it and stick to it and start tomorrow. Like literally start and stick with it. There's a lot of ways to get from A to B when it comes to archiving. It is a very complicated procedure. It's incredibly expensive and incredibly time consuming over time. And for those of you skeptics out there who are saying it's no big deal, put it in the cloud, I have somewhere between 50 and 70 terabytes of digital data that I need to preserve. It's commercial work that still has value and I still get requests from it. That's just the digital, not including all the, the scans of tens of thousands of rolls of film. I've, maybe I have 100 terabytes. Where do you put it? How do you pay for that? How do you get it in the cloud? Even doing that is, is an obstacle and it's, it's daunting. My, my suggestion is to make a plan and stick with it. The second point I want to make and the last point is that your family is the ultimate test vehicle to learn portraiture. Your family typically will allow you to get away with anything and you can experiment with them in ways that you couldn't with someone on the street. If you're like me, you have family members that like to be photographed and others who don't. And those who don't are critically important because Portraiture is a psychological experiment. It is a, it is a endless way of playing mind games with another person to get something that you want photographically. That might sound harsh, but that's what it is. And if you go back through the history of, of amazing portrait photographers and think about someone like Richard Avedon, there are stories of Avedon and what he would do to the subjects to get those moments of poignancy from them. So practice on your family. Chances are they'll forgive you. And that way, when you go out on the street next time, you'll be better and more prepared. Good luck and go make pictures.